Hmm, that's a teaser. Empty packages. Oh yeah, a bit of a teaser, huh? Three empties. Oh, there's one. Get my plastic bag out. Another empty. Uh, no, I don't think we want that one. See, and there's a battery from one that's been smashed up. Another empty. Another empty package. I expect if I search over there, you've been slung over there. That'll do for now. There's another one. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> That's a screwdriver. Oh, that was a surprise. Chisel, not a suit, screwdriver. That could be a murder weapon. I just picked that one up crushed in the road. Just spotted there's another one just there so we'll have that as well hi guys another episode of vape hunter as i've been calling this little series canesham today although a couple of the items came from somewhere else uh, i will wash my hands when i've touched these i picked them up holding a plastic bag First one I spotted was this one, Peach Ice Max. Hype, H-Y-P-P-E. I don't know if that picks up on the camera, but that's what that says. Okay, we'll have a look inside that one in a minute. I don't think we've done one of them before. That one was laying on its own, so obviously the case has been stamped on or something. So I don't know whether that one's any good or not. Those were the two I found in Cainsham, walking along by the pub. Loads of empty packages, uh, but only those two. So somebody might have been there before me. And then I spotted this. I just spotted the end of it in the undergrowth and thought it was going to be another vape. But when I cleared the undergrowth. It's a chisel. A bit worried about that. That could just be genuinely a chisel or it could have been somebody's hidden weapon. Or where they've disposed of a weapon after being uh, using it. But it's old and rusty so I don't think there's going to be fingerprints on there to help any uh, officer of the law. I didn't think I'd leave it there anyway. I thought I'd dispose of it properly. So anyway, that's those three items. Then driving back, I spotted that in the road. It's been run over. Battery looks a little bit flattened, but it might be okay. 
I'll try measuring voltage in a minute. And then I spotted that one after I picked that one out of the road. That one was on the side. And that's one of those bigger ones, as we can see, with a much bigger battery in it. I don't know how easily that one will come apart. Elux Legend. Strawberry Energy, 2%. 3,500 puffs. And that's a 1,500 milliamp hour. Can we see that? Let's try and focus on that. A 2400, so that's 20 millimeter diameter, 40 millimeter long, and a zero to indicate it's a cylinder rather than a flat battery. Uh, 2022 0408, date on it, 15 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts, and that's 5.55 watt hours, it says on the end there. I think we're going to have to pull it out from that end. People have commented about the liquids that are inside them that might be harmful to you and might be absorbed through your skin. So you'll notice I try not to actually touch any of the bits that might have the liquid on them. Like that bit there, that's the heater element, which would be in the liquid if, if the liquid was still there, which is probably jammed up in bit of foam jammed up in there. Right, let's see if we can get this one off. There we go. That's where all the liquid will be, in there. Can we push it through? Yeah. Uh, well, in fact, can we pull it out the other way? That's the smelly stuff. Is that going to come out? Yeah, that's all the smelly bits. I don't really want the heater element anyway, so I might just sort of cut that off. I, mean, I need some better cutters than them. So yeah, this might contain liquids that we might be able to absorb through our skin. Possibly, maybe. Uh, Doc Inc. was talking about people filling them with THCs. Um, which might give you a high if you're touching them potentially uh, or inhaling them obviously but I don't think we'll get that problem with these disposable ones because people aren't going to buy disposable ones fill them with a THC and then throw them away they're more likely to use refillable ones refillable and rechargeable so I don't think that's a problem but it's worth bearing in mind you really don't want to get the liquids on your hand on your skin. So those can go in the bin. I'd say I'm 99% certain we've already done one of them anyway. Health bar. I think that's health bar 600 maybe. So you might want the heater element for something, but I don't know. And there might be a use for the little sensor unit there. I haven't thought of a use for it yet. And I think I've probably got enough that I can just throw them away now. I mean, they do have a little LED on them, but, yeah. Okay, so that's those three. This one. Peach Ice Max. Well, that's a different shape battery to the ones that I've been working with. Just 
We want the heater element, which we don't need. And for anybody who hasn't watched these videos before, I keep referring to BigClive.com because he's done some good videos on taking these apart and actually telling you the electrical components, like what the sensor does and how the heater element works. So check the video description. What I'm interested in here is obviously this is a slightly different battery. And I keep quoting the naming convention, or the number convention. And this one's going to be a bit confusing because it's a flat one. And well, numbering convention still makes some sense. 90, 16, 40. Hmm. Don't know. The round ones thirteen forty zero thirteen diameter forty long and the zero to indicate it's a cylinder or it would be if that one hadn't been crushed. This one is flat. Could the nine zero be nine millimeters thick, 16 for the cross width, maybe, and 40 for the length. That's a bit of a guess. 90, 16, 40, compared to that one, 13, 400. 13 diameter, 40 millimetres long, zero to indicate it's a cylinder. That one, I reckon that 90, 16, 40. I'm, re I'm guessing 9 thick, 16 wide, 40 long. I could get a calipers. Right. So... I'm guessing nine wide. 8.0, that's close enough. I'm guessing 16 wide. I reckon that's pretty spot on, 16. And I'm guessing 40 long. Now I'm not sure whether 40 will start from, probably just there. Hmm, 32 if I measure from there. 40 if we measure sort of, well, loosely 40, it's less than 40. But that's what that looks like to me, that the number in sequence is dif different. That one, 13, 13, lengthwise 40. Again, it depends exactly where you measure that 40. They probably allow a little bit for the wires and just say the zero to indicate it's a cylinder or would be if it hadn't been crushed. How about this one? 20, 40, 0. So 20, 19, yep, yeah. 40, yep, yeah, 40, and zero to indicate it's a cylinder. Okay, I think we've sort of made some sense of that. Put a meter on, see if we've got anything in them. Right, I wasted a lot of time with this meter the other day because the batteries were flat, but I think we're okay this time. Can you see that? Just about in the corner. 
So, which one can we access easiest? This will show up negative because that's the negative terminal. And that's the positive that I can dig into if I get in there. Three point two. So not bad. That's about the minimum. Below that there are problems to recharge. 3.7 nominal voltage, 4.2 fully charged. As I say, that's showing negative because I'm using the positive lead of my meter to connect to the negative terminal. I suppose I could try and do it the other way around now that I've cleared that off of it. That's better. There you go, 3.245. Can we see that? 3.245. Okay, so that's got some charge in it. This one that was laying on its own. Okay, 3.7, so that one's got plenty of charge in it. Uh, this one, go on there, go on there. 3.5 and then finally this one which is sort of tucked away quite neatly get on there, get on there 3.6 so these little charger boards you can buy online I've shown them before I can never remember the number. I can't remember whether it's TP5046 or 4056. And that's that bit there that controls the charging. And then that bit down there is the battery protection circuit that prevents you from discharging it too far. So the battery connects to where it says B plus and B minus. And then whatever you're running off it goes to the out plus and the out minus and you charge it via a USB there. So if you keep this in circuit, it protects your battery. This one doesn't have a protection board on it. That one doesn't. That one clearly doesn't. And that one doesn't. But the circuitry in there does monitor the battery. I understand. If you check Big Clive's video, he makes it clearer. Is that one going to come out? That one's in at a jaunty angle. That's where it's been crushed, isn't it? Right, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to rig up this thing so that I can put some charge into them. That's just a connector. The other ones I've done, you'll have seen, if you've seen the videos, I've actually soldered them directly to one of these things or put a connector on the end of it so we can plug it in. That'll do for now, I think. Just very quickly, I did say I was going to use that connector to connect the batteries up. So negative to negative, positive to positive. And if I plug this in, you should get a red light to indicate it's charging and eventually that will change to a white light uh, sorry a blue light um, this particular board 
charges at one amp or at least a maximum of one amp if it's drawing less than one amp then it draws less than one amp it doesn't force an amp into it by any means um, but if you want it to give you less I mean if you're using one of these that's expecting 550 milliamp hour you change and if I point with that red wire you change that resistor just there that's labeled R3 you know, when you buy these you should be able to see in the listing it should have a list of the different resistors you need to go there and to give it one amp uh, I can't remember what that resistor is but for half an amp I think you need about 2.2k resistor just there so that's from memory if you check the um, online listing it should give you the details you wouldn't normally do it like this you'd actually put a connector on it but I just thought this was a quick way of checking whether they'll actually check, take charge that'll be the one that's interesting because that, no that one that's the one that was crushed so we'll see oh that one's a little bit crushed as well what I might have to do is charge one of these up and then stick a nail through it so we can see whether they actually go up in flames or not. Blue light on, so that's the big one charged. Let's uh, unplug that. I have to remember we've got bare ends there now, so we could short this out if we're not careful. Four point one four, yeah, that looks good. I'll need to protect those so we don't accidentally short it out when I put it back in the box or something. Which one can we do next? Well, you don't need to see the rest. That's just to show you that one took charge, okay. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel, and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.